Hi, I'm Eddie Griffiths and I'm the High School Partnership Officer for Manchester United Foundation. Today we're at Media City um, because we're recording our super special podcast series where we're interviewing our student voice captains on our student voice project. We're going to be discussing various topics um, around the year, different themes and making sure our young people are heard. So today we've got Savannah and Habib from Dean Trust Ardwick and I'm going to hand you over to them to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Savannah. I'm in year 10 and I go to Dean Trust Ardwick. Um, I'm very passionate about singing and acting and I hope it's something that I can take up in the future. Hi, my name is Habib and I'm in year 10 and I attend Dean Trust Ardwick and I enjoy playing football and hopefully hope to go pro in it one day. So we spoke this morning a little bit about um, anti-bullying week. And it follows on quite nicely into our topic number two, which is Social Media Kindness and Social Media Kindness Day, which is coming up um, this month. And I think it's really important because I know, for one, I, I think that social media is pretty inescapable. I mean, I'm going to ask you straight away, Habib, how long do you spend on your phone each day? Oh, like six hours, I'd say, if not Savannah? More. On the weekends, 24 hours. Oh, you know? my goodness me. So the amount of hours we're on our phone, which connects us to everything, is massive, right? It's whenever we get home from school, we scroll for hours on end, um, or at the weekend, we're on it all the time. Now, there's no doubt it has positives. I completely agree. Social media has positives, but it also has negatives. Um, what do you, Habib, what do you think the negative, uh, sorry, the positives are of social media? Um, there are some positive role models on social media, like Marcus Rashford, what he planned to do in lockdown with the free school meals. Um, people could look at that and think, oh, I want to make that positive impact and do what he's doing to yeah. help make the world a better place. Really good point. So the fact that people can share positive things that are happening in the local community or worldwide or whatever it's happened, having access to see what's going on without social media, we wouldn't know, would we? Unless you read the newspaper, for example. So having it right there and seeing the amount of support for that project was amazing, yeah. Savannah, what about you, positives? Um, it helps people keep in touch. Like, if you've got family that lives over abroad or they live somewhere else, it helps them, like, um, keep in touch and know what's going on and make sure that they know everyone's okay and stuff, yeah. That's a really good point. I think um, it just connects us humans mm. doesn't it where there's where it wasn't we weren't able to do so we couldn't then go on facetime and see someone else's face on the other side of the world we can now do it within a couple of rings on facetime like exactly and it, and i think that kept most people sane throughout that period was being able to communicate uh, connect and communicate with with family and friends um any other positives it also helps us know what's like um going on in the world and stuff um and those people that can't really get out that much and find out what's going on they're able to, you know, click on the social media and view what's going on in the world and what topics are important right now. Okay, yeah, no, really, really, really valid point. Um, so negatives then, because with everything, there's a little bit of a seesaw, there'll be positives and there'll be negatives. What do we think the negatives are? Um, i say the negatives are that um, people project themselves as perfect and having this perfect life. Um, like I'd say now, me being a young footballer, I'm looking at other young footballers that are going pro or maybe signing their contracts and I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'm not doing enough to get to where they are. OK, so it's almost like that pressure of seeing what other people are doing all the time and having to think you have to do more or, or putting more pressure on yourself. And it's a really good point because it won't just be football that relates to it, it'll be every other mm. industry. Um, anything else? Yeah, um, it comes under the same aspect of what Habib was saying, but being like a young female... It's hard to live up to the standards that women should be and that they should look this certain type of way and dress and act this certain type of way. When you see other women um, on social media and you see the way that they dress and the way they act, it makes you think that you're not doing enough. And that's harmful or hurtful, right, isn't it? Very, yeah. Yeah. Um, do we think, and it completely relates to both of your points, do we think everything we see, uh, we see on social media is true and the full picture? No, not at all, because cool. someone could, something bad could be going on in their own in their own life, but they're posting, or maybe they're, on, they're at a beach or something, and other people are thinking, oh, their life's perfect and nothing's going on. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, exactly that, to be fair, yeah. And I, th I, th yeah, I think social media is a great place where smokescreen and mirrors takes place daily. And what I mean by that is that, what we see isn't always what's actually happening. And 
people portray their lives as the happiest and the best and the wealthiest or the perfect body or whatever it may be that people then um, see as this perfect lifestyle when realistically what's actually might be going on could be something completely different and it has that unfortunate negative connotation where what we see is actually unachievable and not actually happening but that's what we what's what we admire and what we see every day and it's forced in our faces so then what we live up to is actually not the real thing mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um and we spoke about your usage on the phones before daily do we think social media is addictive yeah definitely go on because you could just be um scrolling and you you won't even realize that how long you've been on a certain app and you can't help yourself from seeing things sometimes yeah uh, yeah absolutely and it, it's like you said, you can be scrolling on things and the algorithms can be throwing things in your face, which you probably not even realise you're, you're wanting to look at. And that can be quite harmful as well. Um, is there a little bit of peer pressure in that as well? Yeah. Um, sometimes you might feel pressured to like keep updated with what your friends are talking about in that friendship group. You might okay. want to go watch what they're watching just so you can talk about it and have a laugh about it. Yeah, that's a really good point. What happens? Go on, Savannah. Um, like if you're the only one that hasn't um, been updated on what's going on or you're the only one that doesn't know what's happening, you feel like the outcast and you feel like, well, let me go home and let me find out everything that's going on and let me be on social media for four hours finding out all this information. And then all that time that you spent doing that, that could have been the time you spent revising or reading a book. That's it. You guys are coming up to, you know, nearly halfway through year 10. Year 11 is a big year next year. There'll be times when you'll be going home and you need to focus on whether it's football or whether it's GCSEs or whether it's rehearsals for a, um, a performing exam. That management of time is going to be really, really important, isn't it? Um, I've seen recently like challenges on social media and a bit of a craze on TikTok and on Instagram. What, what do we think of challenges? Um, I think some of them could be um, like fun to have a laugh at but others you need to realize that some challenges are actually dangerous that there was a previous challenge one time where someone jumped and then two other people would swipe them and i heard that people died from that challenge because right. they could have injured themselves like hit their head while, when they fell on the floor yeah so. and it's uh, but then it's the thing of you've seen it so we'll do it we'll recreate it and it's almost like you said it's peer pressure from people you've never seen before because you've seen it online and therefore you feel like you may want to recreate it or try it. So what advice would you give for people who are, who are like, you know, being or taking part in social media? Don't fall into the craze and the big, you know, um, need to be involved in everything. Sometimes being a bystander is the best thing to do because not every decision is the right decision. Okay, yeah. Okay, bit of a scenario then. So um, we close our eyes, we open our eyes and there's gonna be someone sat there who we have no idea, they've got a blazer on, they're from Dean Trust Hardwick, they've just been put into the school and they're in year 10 and they've never had a phone before and they're about to pick up a phone and use social media for the rest of infinity or however long they're alive. How, what advice do we need to give them to make sure they're using social media in the right way? What advice do we give? Um, just make sure they're staying away from the negative things and like staying safe online, it could be like, putting restrictions on your phone so you can't access certain things. Even parents, you could put restrictions on their, on their phones so they know what their children are viewing. Okay, yeah, anything else? We need our own personal screen time and we it's our responsibility to put our phones down and say, you know what, I've been on my phone all day, let me just have you know an hour or two, go and sit with my family because that hour or two sat with your family, that's going to... Um, help your mental health so much more than sitting on your phone and constantly strolling through that negativity. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's a again a really good point. Social media kindness day has obviously been brought around to try and encourage society and encourage children and encourage adults to use social media in the right way um, because it's got so many positives and so many strengths. So how can we spread more kindness on social media? by maybe like famous people or people that people are actually going to listen to they could like spread awareness about how to be safe and be kind online and why you shouldn't be unkind to people okay yeah no anything else um i think that we should like even though we might not think of it as so much you know if you see someone post something or you see someone doing something 
it's always nice to say, oh, that's nice. Or did you enjoy your day? Or just that social interaction, which social media is made for, always helps because, you know, it's not nice to be nasty, especially not on social media because you don't feel the guilt as much because you're behind a screen. But believe me when I say you'll feel so much better being nice to someone over a screen because, you know, it's just the right thing to do. You say it's the right thing to do, but it doesn't happen all the time, does it? No. There's, there's still a lot of hate out there and it seems to be hate is the place where, uh, sorry, social media is the place where hate seems to be quite prevalent mm. and um, it's easy to do. Would you agree? Easy to do? It is, yeah. Why? Because you're behind a screen, you don't feel like, it's like, it's like a blur between reality and what's not reality and because you can't see that person and you can't see their physical reaction to what you've said, you kind of don't feel as bad about it. You think, oh, it's only a comment, they'll get over it. But in reality, that person sat thinking, wow, is this how people really view the stuff that I post? And it just puts them on a down or that they don't need to be on. Yeah, yeah, uh, really, really. I couldn't sum it up better, Savannah. Like you said, it's, it's this middle ground between what is actually true. Um, because you're not accountable or people don't think they're accountable when really they should be, and they are. Whatever you say, whatever you've typed, said, sent in a, in a voice chat, sent in a video, you're accountable for that. And therefore, we need to make sure we're spreading positivity through social media. Like you said, you've got to be each other's support band and backing dancers, hype men, whatever you want to say, you've got to be that for each other because at the end of the day, kindness wins. And kindness makes not only the person you're being kind to feel good, but it makes you feel good as well if you're being kind to each other.